Greetings. This is Pastor Jen Collins, uh, one of your pastors at Grace in Apple Valley, Minnesota. And I am grateful that you discovered us, that you are with us, whoever you are and wherever you are and whenever you're joining us. I'm glad that you are here. This is a place and a space where you can come just as you are. I invite you to grab your elements, meaning bread, crackers, juice, wine, and prepare them for we will break bread and eat together. Just as our resurrected Jesus. It's the second Sunday after Easter and Jesus has risen indeed. Jesus himself is here. Jesus himself stands with us in whatever we are carrying and bearing. We will worship together. We will carve out this space for us to sing and pray and dig into scripture, seeing how the Spirit cracks open our hearts and minds to reveal, to reveal those nudges from God, to see what God is up to in our world. Jesus himself is with us. Let's worship. Pastor Deb here with my friend Elmo. Maybe you like Elmo like I do. I like to watch Elmo on TV and, and hear him sing songs and, and be with his friends on Sesame Street. And, and uh, maybe you have a toy Elmo too that you like to play with. 
Elmo can do amazing things, right? Look at Elmo can even. Hello, friend. Elmo can even talk. But here's a question. Is Elmo real? No, he isn't, is he? On TV, he's a puppet. And uh, here, he's a toy. Um, he's somebody we can play with and, and, and have fun watching with and maybe even love. Uh, but Elmo's not real. Uh, that connects with our story today from the Bible that we're going to hear in just a minute from Pastor Jen. After Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, he appeared to his friends. And his friends wondered if Jesus was real because dead people never had come alive before like Jesus did. And they're like, Jesus, are you real? And what did Jesus do? Jesus showed them his hands and he showed them his feet. And Jesus said, I'm hungry. Do you have anything to eat? And so Jesus uh, sat down and ate some fish with them. Here's the thing. Jesus is real. Jesus really was dead. And now Jesus really is alive. He's still alive. And that is such good news for us because Jesus can be our friend for real. And Jesus can be with us for real. And so um, even though we can't see Jesus, it's real. And you can feel that, can't you? I know you can. You can believe that too. I know you can. So I just wanted to share that news with you today, that Jesus is alive and Jesus is real. The Gospel of Jesus Christ is read from Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 36 through 43 today. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and see my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have and when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings. It's Pastor Jen. I'm here as we open up our scriptures, as we listen to Luke as Luke shares about Jesus. And I am recording to you outside. Because outside, outside is where I'm reminded this week that I am called to be. Outside of the walls of my house, outside the walls of the church, outside and with God's people. While they were talking about this, talking, 
I've been doing a lot of talking. Talking with God, talking with people, talking with people I don't even know. And talking with my five-year-old daughter. Talking about this. There's so much that has been unfolding these past few days. And yet I'm reminded in everything that it's because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. That's what grounds me. That's what centers. That's what calls me. Jesus himself stood among them. I felt that to be true as I stood on Monday night with Dante Wright's family, with the people in Brooklyn Center, Say his name, Pastor Angela Kabeb and Kelly Sherman Conroy and other amazing Twin City leaders led a vigil and they said, say his name. And it took a moment to say his name because there were too many names. The crowd hesitated to say Dante right. Too many names, and yet Jesus himself stood among them. I've been listening to leaders the past few weeks on healing our city. Just the other day, Nakima Levy Armstrong and Ruby Sales today, because I'm recording ahead of time. There will be more in the coming days. But their wisdom, just like Jesus, Jesus stood among them. Jesus, who resurrected just a few days ago, rose up, left the tomb, and showed us the reality that we live in. This is going to be the next battlefield of civil rights. Here, Minnesota, the place I call my home, the place you and I call home. Resurrection is being called out. Jesus who wakes from death itself, the reality of flesh and bones. Jesus himself stood among them. And he didn't, he didn't stay inside that tomb. He walked on the road. He met people for meals. Jesus shows us that we are to be witnesses. Witnesses. to life. Jesus himself. <sighs> There's a role for everyone that my sister Nikima Levy Armstrong pro proclaimed. A role for everyone. But it's not about sitting back. She said someone had to have hope. 
those who have gone before us, someone had to have hope or we would still be in chains. We would still be oppressed. We would still be in the dark and lost. Someone had to have hope. Jesus saw that. Jesus himself stood among them, walked with them, ate with them. Those were the first things that Jesus did. To become more than what we were yesterday. Let's move into the intimacy of community. Ruby Sales spoke these words into being. We have a soul. We are people. Having to explain to a five-year-old that maybe, maybe her dad has a target on him. That maybe her grandmother, that maybe she herself. The words of a five-year-old spoke to me on Monday. Mommy, could I die because I am black? And that reality is yes. That broke my heart. But someone has to hope, has to change that reality. I weep with other mothers who have lost their sons and daughters, their husbands and fathers, grandfathers. Jesus himself is there. Jesus himself is on the road. Jesus himself stood there. Jesus himself breaks bread so that there will be grace upon grace and life abundant so that this brokenness, so that tomorrow can be different and better than today. Jesus himself is with us. I invite you, come to our Zoom coffee hour. I'll be there. Call, email. I am there with you in all of this, my friends, and I hope you are there with me and your other siblings as well while they were talking about this. Jesus himself was there. So let's talk about this. Let's share a meal. Let's walk and do something. Let's be the work. Amen. Friends in Christ, it's been a week, it's been a month, it's been a year. What have we to offer in the face of all of this? I invite you to pray and seek answers to this question for yourself and pray for collective wisdom for grace as we step into this moment that God is giving us. 
How are we going to be part of God's healing? How are you going to be part of God's healing? How are you called to bring love into this broken, broken world? I know people of grace have always shown up when things are hard. And I thank you for your generosity. This past month, uh, Grace people shared $4,310 for National Food Share Month, which we are passing along to Shepherd of the Valley, uh, their food shelf there. I appreciate your generosity. I'm grateful for your faithfulness. I'm grateful for your companionship. And together, we will offer what God has given us for the healing of our community. With the whole people of God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for your children seeking community and space to heal, grieve, and seek justice. We pray for the patience, restraint, and respect of law enforcement patrolling areas of community healing. We pray for the family members around the country experiencing loss due to police violence, especially the families of Dante Wright and George Floyd. As we strive to live our lives in your image, dear Lord, we pray that you may guide our feet in standing against injustice, use our voices to protect our Black neighbors, and open our hearts to listen with empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, with COVID-19 cases once again rising around the world, we pray for empathy and patience as we eagerly await the day when all of your children have access to the vaccination. We pray for the healing of those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic and for medical personnel working tirelessly to support our communities. Lord, in your mercy. As Ramadan begins this week, we pray for your Muslim children around the world facing discrimination and religious, religious persecution. Bless our hearts and minds with tolerance and respect for all of your children. We pray for peace during this sacred time and ask for your protection of our Muslim neighbors around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Please pray for Marlene, Mike's family, Aunt Jane, Steve, medical personnel, those who are sick, lonely, and suffering, Mansajero de Cristo Lutheran Church of Guatemala, and all service personnel and their families. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. After Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he did was he sat down and ate with his friends. And so Jesus invites you now to sit down and eat with him. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Come, let us eat. Let us eat this meal of life. Blessing, written by Kellyanne Wolf and adapted for Grace's worship as we honor Earth Day this week. May we be stirred to steward what we have been gifted. We were made for this earth and this earth was made for us. Go forth to love and serve, knowing in our deepest hearts that we are blessed from the beginning of time. In the name of the one who called all things good, amen. Good morning. It's good to be together in worship this morning. We're glad to be with you wherever you are, exactly as you are. We wanted to share a few quick things coming up. One of them is today. We're taking the chance to help out our neighbors up in Brooklyn Center. So the way that we're helping them is uh, by making sure that their basic needs are met. Here's some things that we know they need. Um, Pastor Jen Collins uh, is part of a Twin Cities Interfaith Movement Chaplains a group that is coordinating some items for families in need up there. So if you have these at home or would want to make a quick run, uh, you could bring these items over to Grace from 11 to 12, right after our coffee hour. Communion will be available as well. You'll drive up, drop off items, and we'll make sure that those get up to the places they need to go. Another way we're helping is by creating prayer flags. So. These are seven by nine inch small flags. They can be on any kind of material. You can write whatever you like on them. Um, and whether uh, you drop them off today, you can bring them to the Grace office and we'll make sure they get where they need to go. 
Um, here's some details on these flags. You can also head to the Twin Cities Interfaith Movement Chaplains Facebook page and submit uh, your prayer requests and uh, prayers for our community on there. So we're helping with some goods and we're helping through prayer. Thank you for showing up for our community. We want to make sure that you have the date saved for May 9th. May 9th is our next church in the park. It's going to be a great morning. Um, we're going to do things like bless our seniors. We're going to do things like welcome new members into the family of grace. And uh, we're going to sing together uh, on that day. And so we're excited for church in the park. Mark your calendar. One service at 930 that morning. Plan on coming there. A sign up will come out uh, in the next week or so, and you can sign up and join us for Church in the Park. We're really looking forward to it. Head on over to Coffee Hour. That starts right now.